there was definitely some mixed opinions about my choice of hammer or mallet. And still to this day, I'm getting emails. Um, I think some get it, and a lot of people are, uh, are very opposed to it. Basically, I'm going to definitely destroy my chisels with it. There's a bit of a story, really, with why I use it. And it, I used to use a wooden mallet. That's what I was trained to use. That's what I've always used. I liked round-headed mallets. I found it quite fast. And... I was battering through a job one day and it did that thing where you're going like this and then you look and all of a sudden you've just got the handle left and there's that delayed thought behind you where the heads flew off. And I definitely wasn't going to, or in the mood, to make a mallet to replace it. So I looked over and doing that thing where you're hoping the solution will just present itself and it did. It was my lump hammer. It was originally for on my forge because uh, I like to do like forging as a hobby or I did at the time. And this isn't the original hammer. This is just a branch that I stuck in it because... The handle then snapped. But I've been using this for years. And I've never broke a chisel handle with it. I've broke chisel handles in the past. It's a perfectly uh, normal problem to have. But I've never broke a chisel handle yet with this. I'm not saying it's never going to do it. It will do, I'm sure. I've got a few chisels here that I use daily with it. And you can see the heads. There's absolutely no damage whatsoever. There's no cracking. Absolutely nothing. These are... The old Marple split proofs. These are classics. These I got these when I finished my apprenticeship. My old man bought me them. And I've used them every day since. And of course you wouldn't expect these to split. These are made to be used with a bloody claw hammer. There's one here with a metal hoop on it. It's slightly burred. But there's nothing I'd worry about. And these get thumped every single day. There's another one there. Another butt chisel. No problems there. These are my most used chisels throughout the day. Um, I've really never had any trouble. And I think... The thing is, I think you sort of assume that you're just going to go full welly on a chisel with your mallet. And with a metal hammer, that's not the case. You, what you tend to find is that the metal isn't going to absorb like a wooden. It's not going to absorb its energy like a wooden mallet does. With a wooden mallet, you've really got to thump it. With this, you've only got to tap it. And all of its energy gets transferred to the chisel's edge. And I think that's obviously a good, a, a key part of it. Now, I would expect to get death threats if I was using a claw hammer, something like this. Now, this is where our our perception of perhaps of using a metal hammer is bad practice. So what is the difference? They're both steel. Why isn't that splitting my handle? What that most definitely would. And it's as simple as this has a small face. And you're only going to run into trouble when you just, you know, skin your blow off it. So you're coming down and you just clump it to one side. And it's doing that repetitively. That's what's going to shag your chisel handle. Something like this. Great big face on it. I'm hardly going to miss. And even if I did, I reckon it's to do with that rounded face. It's slightly curved. So there's no... There's minimal chance of missing your blow as such. And that's what's going to damage it. Now, I am a very weak-minded individual. And I have bent to peer pressure. And somebody recommended that I tried this out. This is a, it's made in England. It's called the Thor. I always thought that was me Thor, but this is the Thor. And it's, I don't know what its intention is. I suppose it's just a general purpose mallet. I don't know if it was intended for chisel purpose, but I did, I bought one. And I will, I have to admit, this is the best mallet I've ever used. I don't use this anymore. Since coming to this, I've not, I barely picked that up. I've been staggered by it. And whoever it was who recommended it, I do owe you a pint because it's uh, it is phenomenal. I would never have expected it. The, the soft face is brilliant. You can get them with two hard plastic ones or one with soft. I took a punt on the soft face one and that's brilliant for assembling. It's the only mallet you need. And this, this seems to transfer energy much more like a metal hammer, which is good. Once you've used stuff like this, you won't go back to a wooden mallet again. There, there, there just seems so much more work involved in using them. This is just so light and it does transfer well. It's funny really because when you look around, I, I, well, I call us, we're Western woodworkers, but you look in the East and all of that and they all use metal hammers without much trouble. Um, and even a lot of fine woodworkers today, you, you see them, they have these little snazzy brass mallets and they're like almost holding them in the palm. They're tiny little handles on them. We don't have a problem with that. And I know it's brass, I know it's a little softer than this iron, but it's, it's still a lot harder than the wood. And that doesn't risk breaking the handle. 
And again, it all comes down to having a nice wide face. I'm not going to recommend you go get yourself a lump hammer and start clumping your chisels. If you're happy with what you've got, use it. If you're looking at buying a mallet, get one of them. That is brilliant. But no, if I do ever use that, send me death threats. But leave Lumpy alone. Another question that's led off this is, do I get one arm bigger than the other using it? The answer is no, I don't think, because like I've said, I'm not wellying it. If I was wellying it, I can imagine it. But if, if I don't, let's see if I can find a bit of wood. It's a bit there, it's a bit of pie. You can see with a metal hammer how very light I'm being. And yet you can see it sinks in. I mean, look at that, that's gone right in. That's the second bash. You know, we're a quarter inch in there. If I go again, it, you can see I'm not having to hit this thing hard. I'm just letting it drop. I know from experience that using a, a, a wooden mallet, unless it's oil filled or you've filled it with a weight, a lot of mallets have weights added. You, you know, you've got to give it a bit more of a swing or use a bigger mallet. This, again, back on this, Sorry, I love this thing. It, it, it hits like the metal hammer. You know, look at that. Bloody hell. It just slides in. So, no, I don't get a bigger arm than the other, but that's because I'm not giving it any welly. And whilst we're on the subject of metal hammers, I also, because I'm sure this is going to come up in future videos when you see me doing it, I adjust metal planes with them as well. And I read quite a lot, um, I think it's even... In older books, you know, you shouldn't maybe perhaps use a metal hammer. But I, again, I've, I've never had trouble. And I think the key to that, you know, I, I tap the blade, no problem. And it does, it, it burrs over a little bit. They all have all these planes. Uh, you know, you can you can tell you've hit it with a metal hammer. But there's just so much more feedback with, with iron than there is with wood. And it's got, regards to the wedge, you don't damage it if it fits well. Because you're not having to hit it hard. You only have to tap it. And that's the... Uh, that's the key, it really is. Another final note that is definitely worth mentioning is obviously technique. And I always remember seeing, when I did some site work, um, a plumber, and he was battering out this chock of wood that he needed to get some pipes past. And he had a wooden um, handle chisel, and of course using the claw hammer, and he basically just stuck it in this frame and he was welly in the thing. And uh, I felt ill watching it. And that's a lot of the trouble you see is you've got to understand that a chisel, no matter how sharp, is a wedge. And it's always only going to go so far and then it's just going to bottom out. It's going to wedge itself in and it doesn't matter if that sharp, that edge is sharp enough to split an atom. It ain't going to go no further because you've still got width of the chisel to contain the thickness of the blade. So it's always making sure that you make relief cuts. And that's even, that goes with a wooden mallet anything. A wooden mallet, you'll smash your mallet head or the chisel. If you just, let's sink one in and let's do the example. You know, I'll use that so no one's ill. So that it, that is one clump. That is as hard as I would ever need to hit a chisel. If I wanted to go deeper, because let's say I was relieving some weight. Let's, let's say we're cutting a mortise. We're cutting a mortise here. So, and I want to go right the way through. If I wanted to go any deeper than that, in a poor woodworker's mind, you'd come along and just clump it again. You know, you'd be banging that like Billy out and wondering why you're getting no deeper. And that's because he's it, 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 it's done his wedge thing. It's, it's maxed out. Different species of timber are going to have a different limit to that on the compression, blah, blah, blah. But what I do now, if I want to go deeper, is obviously just come out put it in front of the cut, make a relief, get rid of that waste, go a bit further. And you can see already I'm going so deep already. You know, I'm I'm approaching half inch now. You know, it's that's 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 the key. You've got to relieve waste. You can't hit um even a tree, you can't hit it with an axe and keep hitting that same spot. You've got to take that waste out to give the chisel room to go in. So a chisel never needs to be struck heavily. If you are, the technique is poor and you need to reevaluate where your waste is, is clogging the chisel. Should any ever have to tap? Now, I'm not too bothered about YouTube likes, but I am currently a little bit addicted to Facebook, so a like on there would be appreciated.